Okay, let's make an isometric grid. So let's make a new composition, make it 512 by 512, hit OK. Let's make a new line, and we will make it straight up and down to 90 degrees, and we'll make it 512 pixels tall, the height of our composition. We'll select it, and we will align it to the left side, and vertically align it to the center. We'll select it, hit Enter, and we'll move it horizontally by 16 pixels and hit Copy. So we make duplicates and we hit Control D to duplicate the last action. Do that all the way until it gets to the other side of the composition. Finish that off, make a new line, let's put it at 30 degrees. Now let's make the length a lot longer than that, so say 100, 1500 and hit OK. Let's go ahead and align it to the right side and to the top so that it starts from this corner and goes down. We'll go ahead and hit enter again, and this time we'll just double the horizontal movement to 32 and hit copy. And we'll hit control D to duplicate that motion over and over again. Get that all the way until it gets to there. Let's grab the original one and hit enter, but instead of 32, let's do negative 32 and hit copy. So we'll duplicate that action again until it gets to this side. And now we have one direction of our isometric grid created. Now let's create the other direction. So instead of negative 30, we'll write 330. So that's basically negative 30, and we'll hit OK. And we'll align it to the left side, and we'll align it to the top. We'll hit Enter. Let's do negative 32, hit Copy. Let's Control B that until it gets all the way to this corner again. Bam. And let's grab the original line and hit enter as again. And instead of 32, let's do, instead of negative 32, we'll do 32. Hit copy. We'll do that over and over again until we hit this corner. And then we have our basic setup of an isometric grid. So let's to make this all solidified and make these individual triangles. We'll hit control A, select everything we have, and we will go to our Pathfinder window and select divide. What divide will do is it'll it'll actually make these all into individual triangles, which is exactly what we want. So now that it's it's divided all those up, let's open up our layers and our it will notice that everything got grouped together. So let's ungroup with Control Shift G. Now let's select the unwanted triangles that were made as a byproduct of the divide. So let's make this a little bit more visible by giving them a stroke. We'll select them with a rectangular selection. Select those, delete them, select those, delete those, select these, and delete those. So now we'll zoom in here, and we've got a basic isometric grid here, and of course you can scale this up as big as you need it to be. But the reason why this worked as well is because I made it 512, and 512 is divisible by both 32 and 16. So now that we have this isometric grid, what you can do with it you can do a lot of things with it, but let's concentrate on painting something inside of this isometric grid. So select everything and let's make the stroke a little bit smaller so that it's a little bit easier to see this grid. So now we've got the grid. We'll do Control A and we'll go over here to our tools panel and grab the live paint bucket tool. And you want this so that you can create, so you can paint in these individual triangles. So now that I, uh, I clicked, it created this into a live paint layer. And let's take the stroke off and let's fill it with a red color, for example. So let's paint one side of a uh, imaginary isometric object here. And we'll just paint all these triangles in. I'm just clicking and holding until I get all those. Then let's do a orange color and we'll, we'll paint out the top of this object. I'm sorry, orange. And we'll paint out the top of this object again. And let's do our last color of orange and paint in that last side. And if you deselect everything, let's notice that um, we've got an isometric object. And if you want to make this so that you can't see the grid, you select everything and make sure the stroke is on none. And when you deselect it, you'll be left with a nice isometric object, which just got literally perfect edges. and. Um, You'll be able to export that, and of course I suggest that when you export that you make sure that if you export in a PNG, make sure you, uh, you, you make it as art optimized. Um, 
that'll give you a lot nicer lines. So I hope that helps you create something isometric and illustrative.